Yes, uh, hello again uh, and welcome for another coaching session. Today uh, we will talk about one uh, about one of the latest addition to simulator controller, the so-called startup profiles. Um, as always, we have a live uh, session here uh, in our Discord, so um, all who are there, very welcome. And uh, if you have questions, jump in, as always. Uh, but I will put the uh, recording also on YouTube later for all the other users of simulator controller. So, um, then let's start. Um, as you probably know, um, simulator controller has tons of configuration options and settings which are for the most part in different logical places, but sometimes there are in places uh, which are, yeah, let's say historically, <laughs> for historical reasons. And um, the latest edition, the so-called startup profiles will give you the possibility to add another layer of uh, settings, but it will make things much more easier. And before I will, uh, yeah, show you how the startup profiles are working. I will sh briefly go through all the possible configuration um, areas of simulator controllers so that we have the complete picture at the end. Um, everything starts with the initial installation and configuration, which can either be done in simulator setup or in simulator configuration. Um, I will now uh, use this one, which gives you a lot of configuration options. For example, let's take a look here. The race pattern, you can uh, tell what kind of uh, uh, announcements and informations he will give you during your sessions. Or for example, here, the race engineer, where it uh, takes the tire pressures at uh, session beginning and so on. The basic idea of these low-level settings is that they stay the same for all sessions you uh, will be using simulator controller. Um, but you can probably imagine that there are many settings which might be session-specific or, for example, if you're running a training session versus running a race session, uh, you may, might have uh, different settings depending on a car or a given track or even a, uh, a given weather condition. Um, to prepare the most important settings just before your session, there is a little app called Race Settings where you can say um, what are your um, initial tire pressures, uh, what you want to target for your optimal uh, hot tire pressures uh, when you go for a pit stop. Uh, you can give some settings uh, about your strategy and so on. Um, the drawback of this application is that you have to give all these settings each time you will go to a track. Many of them might stay the same, but for example, the, the tire pressures or your pit stop uh, decisions might vary depending on the track or the car and so on. Therefore, I have uh, introduced the so-called session database uh, some time ago, which allows you to um, yeah, create defaults for a lot of the settings which are um, available in the race settings app and you can define those defaults depending on a given car, a track or a given weather condition. So for example if I change here to a different track, Barcelona, we see that in Barcelona for all cars in all weather conditions the pit lane delta is uh, 30 seconds and um, these are the settings which are uh, active for all cars and all tracks in all weather conditions in Assetto Corsa Competizione. 
you can switch even to a different simulator and you will have a different set of settings. The rule is first the ray settings are loaded, then those yeah, specific settings are copied over the settings you have chosen here. So these are some, some, some kind of default values. So the problem here is that um, the list of settings here is extremely long. Um, there is a very good documentation for that. You can find it on the disk, uh, on the GitHub in the wiki, but it's still a very, very, very long list of possible options you can choose. And um, there are quite interesting combinations you can create with those settings and it's not totally obvious how these combinations will work. And this was the uh, main idea to create the startup profiles, um, which yeah, will cover the most common and most basic configurations in one place. And they will be much more, yeah, let's say, um, usable for beginners of the software, for example. The startup profiles can be uh, reached by clicking here on this little configuration icon and it will open a dialog which looks like this. Let me close this. And um, yeah, using this dialog you can uh, create a list of typical profiles, typical configurations you want to use in your typical sessions. Um, let's start here, for example, with a practice session. The practice session, it's uh, running in the mode solo. We have two modes, or uh, solo races or team races in simulator controller. Um, you can choose which of the control center you want to use during your session. Uh, there are two types, the practice center, which is uh, very usable for training and solo races, or the race center, which is uh, which can be used only in team races. Um, you can define um, what level of interaction or in, yeah, what level of interaction you want to have with the, with the different race assistants. You can define in team races. Uh, session uh, session settings for your team server connection and you can define for each um, configuration for each startup profile differently and independently very common functionalities you want to use during this session um, there are a couple of predefined uh, profiles you can start with um, these profiles are available in simulator setup uh, as preset. I will show you. This is this preset here, default startup profiles. If you want to copy them to your configuration, check, uh, select it, uh, move it over to the right and you will have exactly those startup profiles as a starting point for your own uh, configurations um, as we see here. If you want to use a startup profile you can activate it, save it and when you now click here on startup this profile will be loaded and will be used to customize the uh, whole functionality of simulator controller as defined in the profile. For example, if I click now on startup, it will load the profile, it will apply it to all applications and it will start up as defined in the profile. For example, in a few seconds, the practice center will open up because it, yeah, there it is, because it was defined in the startup profile. Okay, I will now quit this again and go back here. Um, let's go through all the interesting settings here in the uh, 
startup profile. The first you see here is the so-called autonomous mode. Uh, this was introduced some time ago as also as part of the race setting. Autonomous mode means that uh, the assistants are allowed to take action without your personal confirmation. For example, if the strategist uh, can come up with a better strategy than the one you started with, it will normally ask you if uh, he uh, can update uh, the strategy, switch to the new one. Um, but in autonomous, autonomous, blah, 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 in autonomous mode, it will do it without asking for confirmation. This setting is one of those combined uh, settings I, 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 I mentioned before. If you take a look at the... Um, at the list of available uh, configuration settings of the session database. There are many here which you can use to fine grain control the level of confirmation each assistant is uh, requiring uh, for a given action. For example, here we are in the engineer section you can set if the engineer asks you for confirmation uh, when he wants to prepare a pit stop. And there are several, several levels of confirmation possibility, uh, possible, but the autonomous mode, let's say, uh, yeah, says never ask, always do. <laughs> so um, you can define here in your in your startup setting if you want the assistance to be autonomous. You have three options here, yes, no, and default. Default is an interesting one, which we will see also here at the functions page. This means there is no specific setting in the startup profile. Everything works as it will be working when you have not selected the startup profile. So you have uh, the possibility to use the setting as it is here in the race settings or in the session database. Default is also here if you select standard as your startup profile, which means exactly you are not running a startup profile. Then it's default for everything. So below the autonomous mode, you can um, define the level of uh, interactivity of each assistant. You can say uh, whether assistant is fully active. And here you have the default as well. You can say that the assistant is fully disabled. Disabled means it, it, it is not even started, which means that not None of the services the assistant uh, supplies uh, will be active. I don't recommend to use this because the assistants are doing a lot of things in the background which has nothing to do with the uh, actions like preparing a pit stop or calculating a strategy. For example, they are collecting data for your uh, telemetry data collection, your pressure data collection and so on. So. I don't recommend to use disabled, but maybe. Um, there is a setting silent. Silent means that the assistant is not connected to the uh, voice engine, so it uh, is not able to talk and it will also not listen. It will still be um, performing uh, the duties, but it cannot tell you anything. So the engineer will still plan a pit stop if it uh, is asked to by the strategist or for example in, the t uh, in a team race by the race center. So if your teammate is preparing a pit stop for, for, for the next uh, driver swap, the engineer will still uh, perform this uh, task but it will not talk to you. Um, as, a, yeah, as another uh, possibility, you have here the muted setting. Muted se means that the assistant 
is capable to listen and it is capable to talk, but it won't talk on its own. So, um, for example, you had had an incident, uh, you have some damage on your car, normally the engineer will tell you about the damage, will try to analyze uh, your lap time degradation and maybe he will tell you that it's beneficial to, beneficial to run uh, an unplanned pit stop, but he won't do it when it is when the engineer is muted. You can unmute every assistant during uh, the session. There are voice commands uh, like you can talk again or stuff like that. You, uh, you can find information about that in the documentation. And a muted assistant will still listen to your commands and then after you have issued a command, it will interact as long as this command is active. For example, you can ask the muted engineer, can you plan a pit stop? And it will do. And uh, the engineer will tell you about the pit stop settings after he has uh, planned the pit stop. But then he will go silent again. So that's the settings for the uh, assistance. As you can see, for example, during a practice, the coach will be active, the engineer will be active, the spotter will be muted because uh, yeah, a, a spotter during a practice session does not make, make much sense and the strategist will be fully silent. He won't interact at all, but he will collect data. One possible configuration here. Okay, let's go to another one. Um, as you see here, it's a solo session, so everything here on the team page is grayed out, but we can select here the World Endurance Series, which is a team uh, a startup uh, setting for a team session. And here we have lots of additional options to, uh, yeah, to, to define the settings to connect to a team session. You can either set the credentials to load from profile, which means you can enter the complete credentials for this team session here in this area. It's a duplication which uh, of the fields you have here in the uh, team tab. And the other possibility is to select load from settings, which means everything here will be great. And this uh, team connection settings, the team credentials will be taken here from the race settings as usual. And you can start the race settings here using the pencil. Um, and you can start, if you are the team manager, the, uh, uh, the simulator configuration to manage your team and your sessions. Um, also here from using this button. You will jump to the team server tab and now you can manage your teams here and so on. So, um, when will you use which one? Um, if you are normally, uh, if you are a driver which uh, is uh, quite uh, confident in using simulator controller, I think it would be best to load from settings and you manage your driver settings uh, for the team session here at race settings as usual. But I know there are teams out there where some of the drivers are not very uh, accustomed to PC applications. Uh, they do not have the time to dig so deep into a software like simulator controller and Therefore, um, you can create a startup setting for them. Enter all the credentials here already for them into these uh, fields. Export the startup setting using this button. You download the startup's uh, profiles uh, to a file, which you then 
can send to your teammate and he simply have to import it and he's ready to go. He just needs to check the profile here using the check mark and when he now enters the session he will be connected to the correct team session and can participate in the race. For those kind of drivers it might be also beneficial to uh, set the uh, assistance to mute it for example so they are using the software in the background uh, you can use race center to to prepare pit stops remotely but the driver will not have to yeah, to, to, to understand simulator controller to, to the full extent. Um, yeah, that's uh, the uh, functionality of these buttons here. You can export and import startup profiles. I can do it, for example, just to show it to the desktop. And here it is. Any questions so far? This looks seems not the case, so we can move on. Um, the last page here for the startup profile is the functions um, tab where you can enable or disable top-level functionality of simulator controller for this type of session. For example, in the practice session, I want the driving coach to um, analyze handling issues. But since I'm a, in a practice session, I don't need uh, any performance analysis, analysis or compare to other drivers. I, I don't want to talk about uh, whether another driver is, is uh, gaining positions behind me or stuff like that. So no need for that and it's unchecked. You have three states here for these check marks. Checked means yes, the function is uh, available. Great means the same as default here. So the startup profile will not change the behavior of this top level functionality and uh, it will be used as configured in the race settings or in the session database or anywhere else. For example, also some configuration options come from the low level initial configuration and setup. Um, yeah, for the driving coach, performance analysis and handling uh, analysis, the race spotter, uh, you can ask him to uh, enable the track automation. I think you all uh, know the track automation where you can set uh, points, uh, uh, coordinates uh, on the racetrack where you want uh, different actions uh, to be triggered in your simulator by sending hotkeys to the simulator, for example, changing the traction control or stuff like that. That's a track automation. You can enable or disable the uh, collection of telemetry data for the strategist. You can um, enable or disable the traffic analysis. Traffic analysis is very uh, helpful used together with the autonomous mode, which means that the strategist will um, include information about the current and future traffic. Um, uh, yeah, the future one is uh, computed by using a stochastic approach named uh, Monte Carlo simulation. And uh, the strategists will use all that uh, when uh, planning the next pit stop uh, and uh, it Will, might be possible that he will find an undercut scenario and will call you to the pit a little bit earlier and, and so on. That's the traffic analysis. You can enable or disable the collection of pressure data for the engineer and you can enable or disable different warnings of the engineer. Um, fuel warnings, damage warnings, pressure warnings. For example, Zander, um, if you have unchecked the fuel warning this one here, um, 
like this, you won't have gotten the question you had uh, in your last race. Um, you have um, the possibility to um, disable the pit stop service for the race engineer completely. This is also a very interesting option. Um, there are a couple of users out there who want uh, to consult the engineer and hear what uh, he would recommend, for example, for tire pressures but they won't trust the engineer to uh, enter these values automatically into the, uh, uh, let's say, into the um, pit stop uh, settings dialog of the simulator. They want to do it on their own. So, okay, no pit stop service at all. And if you have, um, you can have uh, settings for the emotion rig, uh, tactile, tactile feedback, uh, you can enable or disable pedal vibration, chassis vibration and so on if you are using butt kickers uh, and have the uh, plug-in enabled in the configuration. So that's it. That's the whole story for the startup profiles. Any questions at this point? Yes, I have, I have a question. Yep, Peter. Um, I see you have an empty square, a boxed square, and a ticked square. What's yes. the difference? Ah, okay. Yes. Um, again, an empty square means the the function is disabled. So, if you have it is enabled anywhere in your configuration for this session, it will be disabled. This overrides any other configuration values. Checked one is the complete opposite. So independent of what you have configured elsewhere, during this session, the uh, functionality will be enabled. Mm -hmm. And boxed means, uh, this is so-called tri-state checkmark, box means default. So leave it as it is. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you have it enabled here, it will be enabled. Okay. Thank you. Okay, fine. Any other questions? Uh, yes, I have also one question. Um, I'm starting simulator controller uh, with a button on my uh, stream deck. Uh, is it possible to create multiple buttons for uh, multiple profiles? <laughs> or do I have to tick every time I want to start simulator controller with the correct profile? <laughs> it's a feature request. It's not uh, possible <laughs> yet, but I think it's a very good idea. I will think about it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other question? Seems not the case. Then I will uh, have uh, one final remark uh, and then we will close this session. The final remark is that this list of functions is um, very easy extendable. So if anybody has an idea for another top level function which will uh, make sense here for a startup profile, let me know and I can introduce it with a couple of uh, low level configurations uh, from the developers, uh, developer environment. It can be done very easily. Okay, then uh, thank you again here at the Discord and I uh, yeah, will stop the session now and uh, upload it on YouTube. And uh, yes, uh, everybody out there, have fun with the new startup profiles. Bye-bye.